ahead and kick this off. So speaking is Kurt Hickson. I am the sales director for our central region here at Alltech, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Mark Uranza. He is one of our sales engineers. He's going to be uh, jumping in here uh, a little bit uh, down the road in the presentation and uh, showing a demo of DocLink. And what we're really going to be discussing is really Sage plus DocLink equals uh, AP automation made easy, right? And then we also have another special guest with us today that'll be popping in and out, I believe, hopefully. And his name is Sherlock, as you can see there on the screen. And we will uh, get going here. So what I wanted to do before we, we shift into the presentation mode is I wanted to throw a couple questions up here for the folks in the audience. Um, really for this, these questions are gonna be answered throughout the presentation. I want you to keep these questions in mind as we move along. Um, as we should address these a couple times, but you know, maybe jot them down, take a screenshot, you know, just make sure you understand that uh, these could potentially come back up um, at the end of at the end of the presentation and pay off for some of those folks that are paying attention. So I'll leave this up for one more minute here before I jump into the presentation. All right, I think we should be good there. So as we all know and why we're all here is we're, we're looking to automate as much as we can and generally automation starts with ap so the reason for that is this big shift right we've had this shift over the last couple of years obviously with covid it propelled that even uh faster but it's that digital transformation i'm sure you've heard this um it's a little bit of a buzzword but it's true right and the digital transformation for us and our product is really connecting people, processes, and data for the competitive advantage. So whether that's an AP or an HR, it's really being able to allow end users to get to that data that is critical to, in their business role within the organization. And so this shift is really what we're gonna be talking about. And that digital transformation, you're gonna see how DocLink can really, you know, penetrate and show you what this digital transformation looks like. So from the from the topic of, of today's discussion, um, we'll start kind of eight through five or one through five, excuse me, um, with the value of automating AP, what is DocLink, uh, how to automate AP, and then uh, customer success, and then how to automate other departments. Because as I mentioned, and I'll mention several times throughout the presentation, we are not just an AP automation solution, but nine times out of 10, we start there and we'll, we'll explain that, right? Because there's low hanging fruit. There's a lot of value there. So let's talk about the first um, topic for our discussion is the value of automating AP, right? So why do we automate accounts payable? It's pretty simple, right? It's kind of that old adage. It's, you know, time equals money. So traditional processing time, as you can see here on the screen, this is pulled from Ardent Partners, right? So this is research that they've done, is the traditional processing is just, it costs a lot of money, costs a lot of time. And if you could put some sort of automation in place for AP, you're gonna be saving a lot of, a lot of uh, money and a lot of time, right? So now that time can be reused in other areas of the business, other than just filing and, and printing out paper and things like that, right? So again, the value is there. It's very easy to see with AP and that's generally why we start there, right? So top priorities um, for automation when, uh, when you're talking about this. And the first one is pretty, um, pretty simple, right? It is going paperless. So it, really what this means is any products or projects rather that are related to imaging, capturing, matching, this is what uh, what DocLink can do, right? So this is always a top priority. The second is going to be automated workflow and approval. So this is a big one, and this is another area where DocLink can really shine. So that's again kind of where we start in in AP because of that value there, right? Including the higher value add. So again, this is pulled from Price Waterhouse Coopers. This is always a great great slide because I don't think people understand that manually touching documents you know, there, there's a cost associated with that, right? From filing to retrieving to recreating documents. And depending on who that individual is, this cost can, can go up. And by individual, I mean role. So if it's an AP clerk to a CFO, if they're spending time doing this, you know, that, that equates to money for the organization. So let's talk about the value a little bit further, right? So when we talk about value of automating AP, we're really talking about 
four different areas, right? Visibility, collaboration, control, and automation. So if we start with visibility, really the value behind visibility is, is you know, you have more employee productivity, you have process efficiency, invoice processing time, and cash flow optimization, right? So that's big. So allowing you to have that visibility gives you a lot of this value. The next is collaboration. Right, so collaboration is a little is is going to be shown a little different here on the slide, but really with collaboration, we're wanting to make sure that you know finance has the ability to make those optimal capital decisions. Right, if they don't have collaboration, they can't do that. Right, if they don't have collaboration, procurement can't identify or negotiate opportunities with key suppliers, and if they don't have collaboration within the organization and their documents at their fingertips. Suppliers can't track invoices for processing status, right? So this is, again, where we need that higher value add and collaboration is part of that when it comes to AP automation. The next is control, right? So when we're talking about control, really what we're talking about is the ability to know where documents are at any given time. So when you have that control, things happen, right? So you can reduce late payments, you can capture negotiated and early pay, payment discounts, right? Eliminate duplicate in payment invoices or invoice payments, excuse me, and then prevent fraud, right? You can, you can get away with that because you know you have control of where documents are, what they're currently doing within workflows, where they currently reside, and you have all that information once again at your fingertips. And then last but not least, to round off our, our value topic here is automation, of course, right? So when we're talking about automation, there's a lot of good things that come along with that, right? So lowering costs and streamlining the AP sub is a big one, right? So from invoice receipt, approval and inquiry, which is huge, you know, validation, reconciliations, when we're doing, you know, maybe three-way matching, things like that, and then settlements, right? So the idea here with AP automation is there's a ton of value and that's why we start there. So let's talk now on our, our second point is how does DocLink really work, right? So how does it work for AP automation and just really beyond, right? So at the end of the day, DocLink is gonna sit outside of uh, the ERP, right? So it's, a, it's somewhat of a standalone solution. So it's gonna sit there in its own repository and it's gonna be represented here um, by our DocLink logo um, in the middle of the circle. And the idea is pretty simple, right? As documents come into the organization, we want to capture those documents. And we want to pull all the, all the data off those documents, right? So we have various ways of doing this, right? Keep in mind, you're not sending this out to a third party. This is all controlled by the end user. So if an invoice comes in the mail, um, someone would open up and they would scan it into DocLink. And then it could be indexed or OCR could pick it up. So OCR is another way of capturing the invoice. And we'll, we'll talk about this and show you what it looks like. But OCR is optical character recognition. It really has the ability to, you know, grab an invoice or a document from an email, from a scan, and automatically bring it in the doc link without anyone really having to do anything in terms of indexing or um, data entry, right? We do have some more simplistic ways of getting documents in from barcodes to just simple email imports. Um, but the idea here is, is once that document's been captured and it's stored in that central repository, again, represented by uh, the logo in the center of the circle, the process begins. And this is really where our powerful workflow engine can take over, right? So our workflow is very, um, very configurable. It can be as automated as you want it to be in terms of routing rules and dictating where documents need to go based on thresholds, dollar amounts, et cetera. You know, so it's it's pretty slick in that in that terms and in those terms. And the nice thing here is you don't necessarily have to rely on practice bloom to do this or all tech, right? We teach you how to create your own workflows, which is nice. So the whole time the document enters DocLink and goes through process, it's gonna be in constant communication with Sage 100. By no means are we ever trying to replace Sage. We're simply trying to build upon that investment and you know, take care of that front end process that creates bottlenecks and slowdowns for the organization. So that's where DocLink really helps out, right? So we're still gonna leverage all the vendor data and all the accounting data within uh, Sage 100, because again, that's your accounting system of record, right? We're just gonna make this a stronger investment for you. So apart from AP, 
Uh, another aspect within DocLink is going to be delivery, right? We won't touch on this too much in the demo, but please note that this is something we can easily do. Um, since we have all these documents and all the criteria along with those documents within the DocLink repository, we can easily send this out, right? So we have a delivery aspect built within our product. And, you know, within this delivery aspect, um, we could package documents up. So if you're sending out an AR invoice and the vendor or customer requires that, you know, supplemental documentation go out with that AR invoice, we could package all that inform information up and automatically send it out to them based on their request, right? And this is all pre-configured behind the scenes and it's all automated. So the cool thing is, is once all those documents have been created and land in DocLink, they can automatically be sent out to um, those vendors or customers. And then the last thing here, um, as we're kind of going through this and, and what DocLink really is, is it wouldn't be a document management solution um, if there wasn't a way to retrieve documents, right? So we do have various ways of retrieving. Most common is going to be our web client. We do have a desktop application. We have a mobile app as well. And then we have the integration into the ERP, right? So for folks that live and breathe in Sage, they can actually access documents within DocLink from our integration with a click of a button, which is very cool. So this is kind of a high level, kind of paint the picture of what DocLink is for you. Again, it's a centralized repository. We're gonna capture documents as they come into the organization. We're gonna use our workflow automation to dictate where documents need to go. We're gonna leverage the, the data within the ERP. We're gonna be able to deliver documents out to vendors or customers. We're gonna be able to retrieve documents, right? So that's, that's what DocLink really is. So when we are, you know, Starting in, in, in AP, it's obviously uh, becoming more and more obvious as I, as I speak and we, we go through this presentation, you know, it, it's really often adopted because of all the paper, right? And there's usually some sort of tedious process that comes along with AP. And because of our strong integration in the Sage um, itself, we can help automate this fairly easy. So when you automate AP, what you're doing is you're allowing for self-service access, right? So if a manager, maybe an IT manager uh, gets a call from Dell and they said they haven't received payment and then they have to call AP and AP has to look it up. Instead of doing that, that IT manager can go into DocLink and see if that invoice has been paid right then and there without bugging anybody and why that person from the vendor is on the phone bugging them, right? Timely approvals from anywhere with that workflow that I talked about. We'll show you what that looks like. It's very cool, very easy to do. And then, you know, eliminating filing and minimizing data entry with our, our capture uh, capabilities. And then, of course, you know, that seamless integration into the ERP. So that's why we really start in AP, right? So uh, uh, along with that is... Again, there's some simple wins within this AP automation process. So if you haven't done anything in terms of automation and you want to automate because your processes probably look something like this, right? Maybe a 12, maybe even a 15 step scenario, depending on matching and requisitions, things like that. But the idea here is, is we want to reduce this as much as we can, right? So we're talking 60, 70% reduction on these steps. And what that does is it equates to, you know, um, time again equals money and we're we're getting a lot of that a lot of that time back and we're also taking over control and keeping a lot of money in our pockets as an organization so again we want to reduce this by over 60 percent which we can easily do and that's what we're going to show you here and the demonstration when i hand this over to mr uranza where he'll walk through you know the actual power and you'll see this um you know from an invoice being captured being brought into DocLink with approvals, workflows, and then um, brought into Sage. So with that being said, I will go ahead and let me stop sharing my screen momentarily. And All right, great, Kurt. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. You need for you to stop sharing according to Zoom here before I can actually share. <laughs> oh, I see what's going on here. Sorry. Why is it not? Uh, sorry. I'm trying to find my mouse here.
Sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> Should be good now. Great. Thank you, Kurt. And good morning or afternoon, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. And yes, uh, there was one question, you know, we, we showing any product. Definitely. Uh, that's my portion of, of the call here, of the meeting here. And then Kurt um, is simply, or not simply, but he's setting the stage uh, for what we are about to see. Kurt, can you confirm that you can see my screen? I just want to make sure I'm sharing the yes, right screen. Yes, we're good to go. Am I sharing the right screen? You can... Yes, we can see it. We're good. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to walk through a day in the life of an invoice uh, coming into your organization. Uh, as DocLink is a modular application, uh, as Kurt mentioned, we're going to focus primarily on um, AP invoicing and streamlining the process in itself. Right. Um, so we're going to start off when an invoice comes into your organization. Um, if you are receiving invoices via a dedicated email inbox, such as in this case, um, in my case, invoices at myaltech.com. Um, the module that we're going to talk to you about first is called uh, OCR, or Optical Character Recognition, where it has the ability to monitor an inbox and automatically bring in um, the image or the invoice attached to that um, email transaction and bring it into the OCR process for classification and extraction. If you're receiving it via paper, um, it doesn't really matter. You're going to go ahead and open the mail as normal you would go ahead and conduct a batch scanning process uh, with your scanner, scan it into a directory. Once again, where OCR will go ahead and pick up uh, any images that is scanned into that folder in itself. Now, for those of you that are familiar with OCR, I'm not gonna go too deep into the OCR process. Um, just a couple of key notes that our OCR functionality has what we call AI or artificial intelligence capabilities, as well as machine learning. Now, what does that exactly mean? It means that when an invoice enters or is imported um, into the OCR process, it analyzes the document itself, it converts it into everything it can read, um, and it goes ahead and any errors that it may have found um, will be presented to the user. And this is gonna be the first step. Um, if there are any extraction errors that a user will be um, engaged with from the OCR perspective. So you'll see here, I have two examples. And as we go through the process, we're, I'm gonna be referencing these two examples. And with invoices, we would typically have a PO-based invoice and a non-PO-based invoice. So what you're seeing here um, on the screen in itself, you'll see that there are, you know, I have an invoice. You'll see that if I hover over um, the labels or titles themselves, that the OCR system is reading these. Um, Pretty much this is how it's finding the data from an AI perspective. It finds the word invoice number. Um, it knows that there is a specific format it's looking for for the invoice number, same with date and so on. So you'll see here, the, in, the full image has been converted to a digitized image where the system can read it. In the middle here is gonna be the extraction of the data in itself. So as I hover over the date field, you'll see the date field turns into orange and so on. The main purpose of OCR, is to minimize or eliminate the manual data entry. Um, it's doing some minor validations, uh, validating that the vendor is a valid vendor, um, you know, but that's pretty much it. We're gonna handle the rest of the validations inside of the DocLink workflow process. The main difference here with my two images is one is a PO-based invoice where we're capturing what we reference as header and footer information, as well as line item details, as we are going to be conducting an automated three-way match when we get into the workflow process for this specific invoice. For a non-PO invoice, we're simply capturing the header and footer information as we will be conducting the GL coding in the workflow process uh, when we get there. Right? For OCR, our main concern here is making sure that we have the proper data so that when we get into the workflow, we have a sense of what kind of first invoice it is, um, and then from there, we can route it around for the type of automation we're looking for, uh, you know, when it gets into the DocLink workflow process. As I mentioned, this is a um, user exception, uh, user interface, so if there is nothing wrong with these invoices, meaning it has a green check mark on it, It'll go, it can go ahead and bypass the data verification stage of OCR, and it's going to go ahead and show up in our DocLink workflow process, which we'll be going on to next, okay? 
So from, uh, from here, what does that look like? So um, if there's nothing wrong with the invoices themselves, I'm gonna go ahead and just log into my Doclink workflow process. When I log into my Doclink workflow process, you'll see here that we have um, the ability now, since we know that a um, PO invoice um, actually contains a PO number, we can go ahead and automatically route it to the proper queues that we have. Um, I am gonna focus right now, first and foremost, on the workflow capabilities of Doclink. And one thing to note, even though I am gonna be showing primarily uh, financial documents for workflow review and approval, uh, the features and functionality I'm gonna show within the Doclink workflow um, is applicable across your organization. Uh, so it's a document that needs some kind of review or approval. Um, you know, it could be a contract, uh, it could be um, a vacation request uh, that gets submitted in. Um, in this case, I'm just using the um, AP process as an example uh, in itself. So you'll see here, when you do have the Doclink application, you can utilize it for other types of workflows, review or approval within your organization. You're not gonna be limited to specifically AP processing or financial processing. In workflow, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle first uh, the PO process. And once again, this is gonna be a very high level. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and type it in the chat. Um, if it gets a little more deeper, uh, maybe we can have a, an offline conversation on what's gonna happen. But in essence, when, when, um, when OCR goes ahead and pushes the information into Doclink, we're able to detect that there is a PO number um, inside an invoice. So what happens there is now the invoice is sent into a specific status. These status names are configurable. In this case, I just called it PO match. And from there, the system is able to go ahead and, and conduct um, an automated 3 year match in the background. So what does that exactly mean? So that means that um, when an invoice comes in, it has the PO number, it has the line item details, the system is able to go ahead and conduct a matching. And if there are any errors, it can go ahead and send it into a queue where somebody could go ahead and take a look at those discrepancies. I'm gonna go into this transaction um, in a little bit to show you uh, the power of the ability for, um, for those uh, discrepancies. However, one thing to note with Doclink as well is that we're able to go ahead and relate transactions within one another. So here in this case, you'll see that when I click one of my transactions here, that has a, a PO number of 0010032, um, the user will also have the ability to go ahead and see other related documents, maybe preceding documents for this process. So here you'll see that with this invoice um, and this PO number, we have other documents that is associated with it. So we have the purchase order, we have the packing slip that um, has come in, and the users can simply have the ability to go ahead and click on these documents if they need to view it. Uh, they can go ahead and open them up. And here really pertain into doing a, uh, you know, a visual match. So you'll see here we have our packing slip. Yeah, we have our invoice um, and we have our purchase order, right? So, and you can also tile this accordingly so you can go ahead and view it. So really it's being able to go ahead and give that visibility, um, you know, to your users themselves, being able to view the documents in question, trying to go ahead and, uh, validate and check the three-way matching more on, you know, the, the documents um, in itself that they have here. Okay. Once again, I'm going to keep this fairly high level as I need to cover uh, quite a bit of stuff and we're limited on time here. But more importantly, I just want to go ahead and click on my general section here. You'll see that the property values or the index values that has been passed um, from the OCR process into Doclink in itself, or the Doclink workflow in itself. And you'll see here, we have the header information as well as line item information. And this is the reason why we can do that automated three-way matching is because now we have this data coming from the invoice. Um, and you'll see here, uh, basically just a system generated issue that, hey, you know, one of your items have a quantity discrepancy, go ahead and take a look at it um, and give me a resolution as to what's going on. From within this interface in itself, if I go ahead and just go into the invoice transaction, right, we'll have the ability um, to go ahead and validate the images themselves. Um, to go ahead and just refresh that. I apologize for that. Right. 
So here, if I go into the transaction, um, within the invoice transaction itself, when I open this, this up, right, you'll have the ability to have um, to provide notes. So here you can take a look at the supporting documents, just like from the other interface that we have. Um, you'll have the ability to approve, deny, or leave informational notes, which I'll be covering here in a little bit on the non-PO process. But you'll see here uh, a system generated discrepancy of what it was all about. And you can see the supporting documents as well as um, the invoice for any kind of resolution process. And once it's been resolved, you'll also have the ability to go ahead and do a manual route if additional approval is needed, um, or if it's simply completed, the discrepancy is resolved, and you, you can go ahead and send it um, into, um, into Sage in itself, right, into, into Sage 100. So that's for PO-based invoices. Um, I'm gonna cover a little bit more of the functionality on non-PO-based invoices, since those actually require a little bit um, uh, more transaction, uh, more actions that's needed. So for non-PO-based invoices, I'm gonna go ahead and open one up here. Um, for non-PO-based invoices, we have another module called the GL distribution stamp. Um, once again, since we do know that this uh, transaction has come in from OCR, we have all the necessary property values um, that we have to go ahead and create this GL distribution stamp. The GL distribution stamp is our um, integration point into uh, the uh, AP invoice entry of Sage 100. So anything that's being conducted um, in this screen uh, from, the, um, from, from the ability to go ahead and assign values that are not extracted from the invoice via OCR um, will then be pushed over um, into a Sage 100 to create that unposted AP invoice entry. Based on our integration with Sage 100 as well, you'll see here that we have the ability to conduct lookups. So if I conduct my vendor code, you'll see here that we're utilizing the vendor master out of Sage 100. So you're maintaining everything inside of Sage 100. We're simply repurposing all this information, right? Uh, so you'll, you'll see here, we'll have the ability to do lookups. We'll have the ability to go ahead. If you have um, the GL account code defaulted in your vendor master, we can take advantage of that configuration um, and be able to go ahead and if they need to change it, be able to go ahead and change that as needed as well, right? And you're probably wondering, well, why am I doing it? Why, why am I doing this here um, inside of the docking process? Um, mainly because of our workflow capabilities. I'm gonna go ahead and just balance out this one line here. Obviously, if you, can, if you need multiple lines, you can assign it to different lines that we have inside of, um, you know, you can add additional lines if needed by simply clicking on the add button um, in itself. Once again, the question of, well, why am I doing it here? I'm in Doclink in itself. Uh, the reason why we're doing it in Doclink is maybe you have rules uh, from an approval process specifically for an AP invoice or a non-PO based invoice, right? Maybe, let me go ahead and just stamp this transaction real quick to commit this transaction into Doclink in itself. Um, so what do we see that stamping process does is it generates a secondary page to your invoice transaction that you're seeing here, but you still have your invoice as your first page. But what I did there is now I added all these property values available to the transaction. So what does that mean for you? This means that if you have specific rules um, that will be used for these property values as triggers, Maybe you have uh, a rule that anything over $10,000 needs to go to a specific approver. Within the Doclink workflow process, we can automate that um, routing process inside of Doclink. Um, maybe it's a specific GL account code that uh, your um, division managers or supervisors own uh, for their budget, and maybe, maybe they have to approve uh, that budget for a specific GL account code we can utilize property values to automatically route this to the next approver or multiple levels of approvals, maybe for a um, you know, dollar amount, uh, signature level of authority uh, approval process. Here you'll still have the ability for the approval, denial, denial and leave informational notes. As you see here, when I click on approve, um, the login name, date and time um, is being annotated uh, and is uneditable uh, within this transaction. If I leave any informational notes um, as part of this process, it will be the, do the same thing, right? And it will be visible. Um, people can see it as it moves through the workflow approval process within Doclink in itself. 
I've talked about the automation process as well as here you have the ability to also do just a simple ad hoc routing. So um, if you tell me, Mark, there is no, you know, we don't have a, a routing rule, but you know, it really depends on where AP wants to send this for approvals. Um, AP can certainly have the ability to go ahead and route this depending on where it needs to go for, for approval. Another flexibility that we have, um, I've mentioned that you know, typically AP would do this task. Um, if you, if you, your managers or whoever's doing the approval um, has the ability or the knowledge to conduct the GL coding, the GL coding task could actually uh, be shared to those approvers themselves. And AP can still take a look at it as a final stage, um, you know, before it gets created into Sage uh, itself. Right. So here I'm just going to go ahead and send this transaction um, to my my CFO. Right. And when I send this transaction to my CFO, I'm going to show you a couple of notifications and approval capabilities that we have within DocLink in itself. You've seen the ability to go ahead and conduct the approvals, you know, from within the, what we call our web interface. So you'll see here, you know, the approval denial informational notes, as well as we have the ability to provide a notifications. Um, so here in this case, I'm gonna go into my approver inbox. Within DocLink in itself, uh, we have the ability to provide uh, friendly reminders, in this case to my IT manager, that my IT manager has, currently has two documents outstanding within um, Roger's queue, and they're both overdue. So this is a friendly reminder that could typically be sent out you know, once a week, twice a week, depending on the frequency that you would like for, to remind your approvers that they have something to approve. Alternatively, we also have the ability um, to provide a notification on a per transaction basis. And you'll see here, we're also able to tokenize the body of the email. So we can have the vendor name, the invoice number as part of the body of the email. And you'll see here that the users can also approve and deny from within the email notification in itself. So on a per transaction basis, the user doesn't even have to go into DocLink to approve the transaction. They can simply do it from within these links themselves. And then alternatively, we also have the ability to go ahead and attach the invoicing question. Uh, so for your approvers, you know, we know that this is not their only task uh, for um, in, within your organization. So here, if they want to go ahead and take a look at the invoicing question, they can take a look at it um, and you know, be able to go ahead and conduct them the action that they need to do from an approval and denial standpoint. The other method of accessing and approvals uh, of transactions themselves, as Kurt mentioned, is through our um, mobile device. So DocLink has an iOS and Android compatible um, mobile application. You simply go into the store where you download applications from, you search for DocLink mobile. The interface is very similar to the, our web client interface. Um, so you'll be able to go ahead and um, see the image. You can see the supporting documents. You can conduct approvals, denials, informational notes. You can do a manual routing of where it needs to go to. However, you will not be able to conduct the GL coding within the mobile device. Um, the real estate is just too small uh, to be able to do that. So the GL coding capabilities will have to be done from the web interface itself. However, from the approval standpoint, you can simply put notes. And if there is a suggestion of the specific GL account code or any other notes needs to go to, um, you know, that can be provided from within the mobile device um, as well. Once all is uh, said and done, uh, the, the transaction has been approved um, in itself. Then from there, it's simply gonna go ahead and take the information and create the transaction um, inside of Sage. Um, so here, just to show you what the end result would look like, um, I'm gonna go ahead and search for a transaction that, that we have been pushing through. If I select that, you'll see that when I select the transaction, the information is populated from the RGL distribution stamp that we have associated earlier, as well as you'll probably notice here within um, within the AP invoice entry, data entry screen of Sage, we have an additional button called the V documents button. So if you are an, an AP user uh, or a Sage user and you need to go ahead and reference this transaction, you know, from within uh, this interface, you simply click on the V documents button. The V documents button will then recall that document. It'll go ahead and display that transaction um, inside of our DocLink document viewer, um, where you not only just have the image, 
but you also have uh, the GL distribution stamp that was applied. Um, you also have the notes that was applied on the approval process that was done, um, as well as you have a full audit trail visibility of what happened within this transaction, right? Every single action that was done um, is logged inside of an audit trail process. So once you're done with, uh, when, once you're seeing this, the transaction is created inside of a SAGE, you would go ahead and post and pay as you typically would just like you enter this transaction um, inside of SAGE. Um, when you do that, the last thing, that, the last process that we conduct um, is that we take the payments. In this case, I'm gonna use a check as an example uh, process. And we, we're gonna go ahead and take that check and bring it into, into um, DocLink in itself. So what we have the ability to do, uh, very similar to any reports, sorry, that you generate inside of Sage, we have the ability to go ahead and, um, and store that inside of DocLink. But more than that, when we conduct that check, so here when you, you simply print out the check, Right, you store it in DocLink. You'll see here, this is simply just the image of the check. It doesn't have your background um, uh, format or your um, logos, anything like that. It's really gonna be just the printout as well as the data. Then that's really what we're after because what we do here um, is when we receive the check, then we take a look at that check number and we associate that check number back to the invoice that it paid. So now you have a relationship between the check and the invoice. Um, and if you need to go ahead and review that, take a look at it, or if you had a vendor actually call you up and say, hey, I submitted my invoice uh, you know, for $5,000. Um, I haven't received my payment yet, uh, either yourselves um, or um, you know, a manager, uh, whoever has access to these documents can go ahead and go in. They can go ahead and review you know, the invoice in question. They can look, take a look at the check. Um, they can look at the, how the approval process was done when the check was cut and answer um, any inquiries that you may have or the, the vendor may have um, as to why they may have not gotten paid as part of that process. Okay. So th these are just uh, basically a, a day in the life of an invoice processing um, that we do or that, that we're able to offer as part of the, the, the DocLink family in itself. As I mentioned, DocLink is a modular application um, and it can be used across your organization. All right, Kurt, are you there? I am. I am. Okay. Do we have, um, you know, so that's what I prepared to show. Is there anything specific uh, that you think will benefit our audience uh, that I should show um, while I'm in my in demo system here? We did have a question, where do docs actually res reside in DocLink slash cloud? on a local server or own cloud? That's a great question. DocLink offers um, basically uh, all of them. Uh, so we do have an on-premise solution. So if you, want, you have your um, Sage environment uh, within your infrastructure, you have servers for them in a virtualized environment or physical servers, uh, DocLink has an on-premise solution that, that can be installed in the same manner. Uh, DocLink can also be in a privately hosted a cloud solution. So, um, if if you have, um, you know, your host, you have a third-party hosting solution. Uh, DocLink can also be hosted in that uh, in that um, infrastructure, as well as DocLink also offers a multi-tenant DocLink cloud solution sitting on the Azure platform. So, um, you know, if you if your organization is looking into a um, into a cloud. Uh, a, a, um, a cloud deployment in, in the future, that's part of your future strategy with your IT team. Um, we can certainly deploy doc, or doc, we can certainly offer you a DocLink cloud solution um, in our Azure uh, infrastructure. In addition to that, uh, DocLink can also be deployed in hybrid models. So, um, you know, if you have your, um, your Sage 100 on premise, but you want a DocLink cloud solution that could be accommodated if you have it, um, you know, if you have your Sage 100 in a uh, private hosted cloud solution, and maybe you want your DocLink on premise because you may have some uh, 
some documents that uh, needs to be within your infrastructure that can also be accommodated. So really any which way from a hybrid cloud solution to a pure on-prem to a pure cloud, well, obviously Sage 100 is not gonna be on a multi-tenant cloud, um, but it is definitely gonna be capable with Docklink offerings. Great, <clears throat> thanks Mark. Uh, that was the, the last question we had. So I think we're good there. Um, I go ahead and stop my sharing uh, here, Kurt. Turn it back over to you. Perfect. And then let's make sure. See my screen? Should be good. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So um, thanks, Mark, for that. So as Mark mentioned, that was kind of a high level, um, you know, AP automation demo. Um, you know, we could dive a lot deeper if when the time's right, if you're interested to see more. But really what I wanted to do now is just talk about the, the quick benefits that were discussed and shown um, with, with this product, right? So first and foremost, right, trying to eliminate 100% of the paper invoices that you receive, reduce uh, approval times from weeks down to to days, to hours, right, if not minutes, um, and then minimize or eliminate data entry altogether, right? Again, that kind of that time uh, savings equals cost, right? So I won't go through all these, but, you know, in some cases, there's additional cost savings that could come into place where you have, if you have offsite storage, you got to think about just the manual printing and uh, copier up, upkeep, you know, if you do any intercompany um, courier services to multiple locations, things like that, and then the time savings of searching, filing, again, that data entry approvals, all this stuff can be done fairly quickly. And then the last thing I'll touch on here is the strategic initiatives. I think, you know, a lot of the higher ups might not think about this, but, you know, Docklink can help you grow without adding headcount, um, you know, because you have that control and visibility on where everything is, you know, you can really take a, advantage of the early pay discount accounts with vendors, you know, avoid any late fees. And then one thing we didn't really talk about, but audits is a big thing as well. So if you ever get hit with a big audit, Doclink can help because we can produce all that information that the auditor is requesting and get them in and out of the organization in a timely manner. Um, so you're not inundated with, you know, pulling invoices, files, etc., and then refiling all that, right? That simply goes away when you have a product like Doclink. And then compliancy. And then, of course, you know, no one really likes to talk about it, but there is a disaster preparedness that can come into play, you know, whether, you know, uh, a fire, a flood, etc. right, you have all your documents, you know, on a server or in the cloud, they're safe, they're protected, so you can kind of pick up the ground or hit the ground running once uh, the, the disaster has been uh, put out. Um, so, what I wanna do is just quickly talk about two of our AP Automation customer success stories here. And, you know, one of them, it, it's a big name, so I always like to show it, but, you know, AAA, right? As you can imagine, they have companies all over or organizations all over uh, the US um, and they really just needed to get a, a solution in that was gonna help, you know, again, reduce time and money. Um, and they were getting hit with a lot of audits, right? So with Doclink, they were able to implement this, um, give a centralized resort repository for documents and that um, audit capability, right? Eliminating paper and then having better communication between the multiple locations, right? They were able to, you know, save on the intercompany um, postage fees, right? So about $11,000. And then their reduction time in AP processing was cut by 75%. So that's huge, right? And then we're now expanding beyond AP with them and we're going into the claims department, as you can, you can only imagine being in insurance and, and other areas that AAA cover. Claims is a big, big thing, right? So, um, you know, happy that we're helping out with them. And then the next one I want to talk about is one of our local customers here in California. It's Palm Springs Aerial Tramway. And, you know, they couldn't find anything, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, their processes were so tedious and slow, and they were just living in the past, and they needed something in place to, to help get them out of the olden times, if you will. So they implemented Doclink, and as you can see here from their quote, it was basically a lifesaver for them, right? It was a game changer. So, you know, they were able to impact their AP um, department immediately when they implemented Doclink, um, and they were able to, you know, 
really streamline all their processes. So this again is just another telling story about how Docling can really help, you know, again, reduce that, that AP um, time, you know, by more than 60%, 75, you know, uh, you know, even, even more. So those were the two customer highlights I wanted to touch on quickly. Now, um, I know I've I said it multiple times at the beginning of this. I know Mark has, has mentioned it as well in his demo portion, but you know, there's other areas that Docklink can really help, right? And what, what I'm what we mean by that is, you know, because this is a, a centralized document repository, you know, we can pretty much pro, you know help automate any sort of business process, right? We can streamline those auto, automated processes, we can eliminate data entry, we can give easy access to documents. So with, with Doclink, you know, we touched on the AP automation piece of the through a matching a little bit, right? But we can go well beyond that. Um, you know, I think natural progression with our product is going to be accounts receivable, HR and legal, sales order processing, you know, for some organizations, you know, if there's field service, you know, you have guys remote in the field needing access to, to work orders, etc. That's another another one. And then facilities management, that's, a, that's another one we see a lot of. But, you know, we're vertical agnostic. We don't fit just one, one type of company or organization or, or, you know, we really can, you know, Every organization has paper coming in and they have some process behind that paper and that's where we can really help out and shine. So whether we're talking about AP automation or sales order processing or HR uh, related documents, Stockland can help. Right. So, I, and this was addressed by Mark, but just to kind of reiterate, because I did have a, a slide in here about our deployments. So Doclink again can be on premise. You know, it could be a subscription or perpetual purchase. Um, we do have single tenant hosted, or we can work with single tenant hosted companies, right? So if you want to put Doclink in a hosted provider that you're currently working with, uh, another third party that maybe is hosting Sage, Doclink could be there as well. And then we do have our multi tenant cloud offering, right? So this is kind of a true kind of SaaS offering, if you will. Um, and you will get all the the benefits of having Doclink in the cloud, you know, your IT will not have to manage anything. Um, so there's a lot of pluses with that, of course. So what I want to do is want to kind of keep this fun for everybody. Um, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation, there was going to be some questions um, presented throughout this or answers presented throughout this uh, presentation. And I wanted to be able to um, you know, throw this up one more time and whoever, the first two people that can shoot me an email and show me uh, these answers to re reply to these answers will definitely get a $25 gift card to Amazon. So here's my email uh, address here. Um, so I'll give everybody a minute again to look at these, get, uh, you know, get these answers jotted down, shoot an email over to me. And what I'm going to do while everybody's looking at this is we promised Rackus Bloom marketing team that we would show Mr. Sherlock. So here he is live in person. This is our office puppy. He's about six months old, French bulldog, and he is happy everybody attended. Hope you had fun with us today. Um, if you do have any questions, um, oops. Try to get back over to my slide here. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, you can reach out to the Brackus Blue team or us directly, and we'll get them in the know of uh, any additional information you want to learn about Doclink quotes, demos, etc. Just let us know. You'll find our contact info there. And again, we appreciate the time, and we look forward to uh, speaking with you all soon. So take care.